So, I'm talking. The name of my talk is "The Rise of the Jamstack DJ Set." Now, uh, why is it the DJ Set? Because the original "Rise of the Jamstack" talk was given by uh, Matt. He's my CEO, my boss at Netlify. He gave this talk uh, last year at the Smashing Conference in San Francisco. And my take is a different take, which is I don't know if you can read from there. I can zoom in a little bit. DJ Set's like designer's journey, all right? Um, so it's the same topic, but from a different point of view. Uh, I am Rafael Kond. Uh, most people call me Rafa. You can call me Rafa as well if you want. And I am a designer at Netlify and a front end developer, mostly a designer right now. And uh, Netlify, for those who don't know, Netlify is a platform to build and host your website. I'm going to give you a demo later. So more on that in a minute. Uh, so uh, the web is changing a lot, and it always has. It changes very fast. Even when I studied computer science back in the day, it was totally different. And right now, uh, these are like three trends, like big ones. First, uh, Git is a part of everyone's workflow, mostly everyone, almost everyone. <laughs> um, who here still like FTPs, files into their server manually? There are some people, I mean, I'm, I'm not judging. I'm just literally asking. <laughs> uh, for most developers now, it's just everything is automated and you have Git, which is a part of most developers' uh, day to day. Uh, also, modern JavaScript, like with ES6 JavaScript, we can build like pretty powerful apps. Um, and there's a very healthy API economy, um, which, you know, you don't have to know much or spend a lot of effort in building the building blocks for your website or web app because there's a lot of good third-party APIs that you can just plug in and some of those like like Algolia or if you want payment you can plug in Stripe or PayPal or whatever you want comments discuss it there for you um, so these are like the trends that we've been seeing now this is nothing new but they're big now almost everyone is doing probably all of these but if not just at least one um, so the web started, this is the first website, for those who don't know, this is still live. The web started as like a way to share like scientific documents between, uh, you know, scientists, nerds at CERN. Uh, that's like what it was built for. It was, it was its purpose. Uh, and then we started doing some stuff on it. But, you know, at the beginning, um, this was it. It was a way to view documents. CSS or JavaScript was not a thing. Um, early this year, I met one of the fathers of CSS, which was amazing. Uh, I met him at actually here in France at SudWeb. It's a conference I don't know if anyone knows about. Uh, that was great. And it's amazing how CSS started as a thing to style a document, and now we're building it, you know, using it to build UIs, like in beefy applications. Uh, it's a miracle how that actually works. The web, I think, is a miracle how it works since, you know, what it was made for. And so back in the day, uh, the web was that you had a browser, you called the server, it got a document, and it showed it to you. And then this was not enough. We wanted more. So we start adding like a program. So it would talk to a, uh, to a server, and then it would run a program, and then send it back to the server, send it back to the browser. And we wanted more, so we started adding like databases. That's part, that became part of our thing. And then, of course, to be expected, this become quite slow. And so we added cache. So we just cache everything to alleviate the slowness. And so this is the current state, I would say, uh, right now. This is how the web works. And there's three major problems with this. Um, one would be security. Like there's a lot of entry points for malware and, and hacks and stuff. Like 70% uh, of WordPress sites are currently vulnerable to to like to, to attacks, which is crazy, because like the, the internet is WordPress, I think, right? There's some stat somewhere that <laughs> backs that up. Um, also, building like secure websites is pretty hard. You have to have like dedicated people who know that um, to make sure your website is is secure. Um, not only about security, but also performance. Like I said, this is kind of slow. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of moving parts. Um, and performance is also something that it's pretty hard to to get in place. And um, 
78% of users who use the web have felt frustration because of just the website is slow, um, which is a random um, data point. I also have another random data point. 4% of people who use the web have thrown their phones because it was slow at some point. I just think that that is a funny one. Um, and lastly, reliability. Like, again, this is the theme. Because there's a lot of moving parts, there's a lot of stuff happening. Um, something being reliable is, is uh, it's a big thing. Like, uh, at some point, WordPress.com was offering for 75K to build, like, a scalable model or unit. It was bananas. It's hard. Like, you don't want to be have your website be linked by Product Hunt or, like, Hacker News or something and go down. Like that's the worst possible moment to go down because it's when people want to look at your website. Um, and so it's hard. And it's also like, it, it's expensive to build a very good website in this architecture. Um, you have to have, like if you're a big website, you have to have a big engineering team and it's kind of hard. Also for me as a designer and front end de uh, developer, I don't know this, like I can't, I can't expect someone like me to build this and have like a, full stack website and on. I don't know any of it. So it's kind of hard and expensive and all that. Anyway, that's like the current uh, state and something that we identify in probably most of you, because the theme here is static websites, are looking at static websites as a thing that maybe we could try. So the ideal scenario would be something like this, <laughs> which is super minimal. Um, and I know, just hold on. Uh, Ideally, we would have our website built with like a static version on CDN, uh, like spread across the, the world, and it would give you the the closest um, server in the world. And this is like static, and just like the old days, you would ask for a website, and the server would give you a website. Of course, you need more capability, you need more stuff, so you could just plug in a bunch of third-party APIs. Um, like the themes of this is you are decoupling the building and the hosting. So every time a user clicks on a website, we're not building your website. The, build, the website is built. It's there. It's static. Um, and also we're decoupling, decoupling the front end and the back end. Um, not only that, and this is the, the most interesting thing to me personally, is that not only this is pretty cool and pretty fast, um, the workflow itself is also awesome. Like it's a Git-centric workflow. Probably the source of your file is going to be somewhere in GitHub or somewhere in some Git provider. Um, you're going to have continuous delivery set up, meaning like every time you push to Git or something, some magic web lords will deal with it and it's going to build your website. Uh, and the build tool is separate from, you know, from the client. Um, and this is, this allows for a lot of cool things for the developer. So not just for the user, because, you know, if, something being fast and reliable and secure is like the only concern, everyone would be writing C forever. Um, we, we don't want it. Like we like to have fun and things being cool and fast. Um, so th that those are like the main principles of the Jamstack, which by the way, stands for JavaScript APIs and markup. Um, I'm not sure who came up with this term initially, but like my uh, CEO, Matt, he's jamming this one. Hey. Um, and so we have, with this, like, uh, we can get speeds up to like 10 times faster than just a normal uh, architecture. Uh, it's also way more secure because there, there's not a lot of entry points for, you know, hackers to, to get in. And so the question most people start asking is like, well, static websites, they're fine and fun, but, you know, I can't really do that um, for my website or for my app. I'm not saying that you, that you can. I'm not going to say that. I'm just asking you to ask yourself, like, can't I actually, really, maybe? Um, I'm going to use one example. This is Smashing Magazine. I don't know who is familiar with Smashing Magazine. I hope so, because we have a speaker <laughs> from Smashing Magazine later. Um, so Smashing Magazine is probably the, the most well-known um, magazine website for front-end developers. Um, it's huge. Uh, and this was how their website was built. They have their magazine um, on WordPress, and they have like thousands and thousands of articles. Uh, it's not a small blog <laughs> by any means. Um, they have a shop that they sell, they sell books and other things, I think. Uh, and that was is hosted on Shopify. Uh, then they have a job board. 
that's a Rails app, and they have a conference. They also have, they're now going big on conferences, and that is the Kirby app. And they were also planning to add memberships to all of this. This is fine, but this is a, like this is a nightmare to maintain. Think like design. Like you, you want this to be seamless and look like the same website. Uh, maintaining one cohesive, consistent uh, UI and front end for this is a nightmare, and just like this is a lot of moving parts. Um, so, uh, Matt uh, again, my CEO. Uh, last year, he wrote an article on static websites uh, for Smashing Magazine at a time, and he was saying how cool and fast they were and more secure and just a better way to build the web. And as an example, he took Smashing Magazine and he built it as a static version and he hosted it on Netlify. That, that part is not important here. You can host it, whatever. And deliver it as a, as a static version. And he got up to 10 times faster. And so Vitaly from Smashing said, hey, Matt, uh, that is great. Because basically in the article, he was saying how slow <laughs> Smashing Magazine was on Smashing Magazine. Um, and so Vito was like, that is great. So how can we, like, can we get all of this on a static version, on a static website? We couldn't at a time with what we had. So we decided to build what we, what we were missing. So we built, we helped out um, Matt and the, the folks at shop uh, at Smashing uh, Magazine. We built a couple of open source APIs. This is all open source, the things that we needed because like, we needed a CMS to work because not everyone writing for Smashing is a developer and can like, get access to the source code. Um, so we needed a CMS and we needed something to authenticate users. So we had to build an API for that, uh, something to manage like inventory for their shop and stuff. So anyway, we built all of this and uh, we made that possible. Right now you can go to next.smashingmagazine.com. Uh, it's still not uh, like the, it's not launched yet. Uh, should be up soon, uh, soon-ish, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but it was possible. It is possible. This is up. You can check it out right now at this URL and see um, and see how it performs. So I think the biggest problem here is the name static. It's not helpful for anyone because you think static and say, no, my website has a lot of functionality. It's not static. Like, that's not... I don't know. Maybe we should call it something else, like modern websites. I don't. I don't know. Uh, the problem is that because a lot of people think a static website and say, "Nope, no, I can't. That's not for me." Um, but this is a great example of something that it's definitely not static. Has a lot of moving parts, and uh, it is delivered on a static version, uh, which then gets all the benefits that I just mentioned. Um, so that is great. That works. It's fast. Uh, and it's secure and all, but what about uh, those that sweet workflow that I was mentioning? Uh, and this is like this is the, the most fun part for me personally, uh, just what this allows for the developer, um, like how the workflow, how cool is that? So I'm gonna go for a quick demo right now, and this is the best idea ever: have a designer code live in front of an audience. Um, so what I'm gonna do with one hand because I'm holding the microphone. So, cut me some slack here. Uh, I have this repo. Who here is familiar with Hugo? That's one static website generator. Cool. So Hugo is one of the, uh, there's like thousands of static site gener uh, generators right now. Hugo is one of the most popular uh, at the moment. And so what I have here is, Hugo is basically you have two folders. One folder that is the theme of your website. One folder that is like content. And then at, at the runtime, well, when you build it, it just makes it all. Um, so I'm going to show you guys. I have here a uh, Hugo site. This is like a, one of our templates, and I'm starting it right now. Uh, I hope the Wi-Fi is good here. And there we go. So this is like a very simple. This is one of our templates. You can. This is on GitHub. I don't have any links, but ask me. I'll, I'll tell you. Um, so this is just like a coffee shop type of deal. Uh, we have like some products uh, right here, and we have also a blog, right? It has right now three entries, and you know, pretty standard, pretty uh, boring, but uh, pretty cool. Uh, this is delivered statically, by the way. It's a static website. Um, this is also on Netlify. I did that beforehand, but to build this site on Netlify, literally you have an account and you connect to GitHub or whatever your site is. Um, 
and you say, yep, this is the repo and we will build it for you. So that means that that website I just saw running locally, it's also live uh, right now. And this is blue because I messed it up. Probably I pushed where I shouldn't. So anyway, so this is live. And what I'm going to do here is Oh, I just I just figured out why that was blue. Spoilers. I'll, I'll show you in the end. You, you, everything's going to make sense in the end. Um, so I have here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, change the the color from that orange to this kind of blue. <laughs> Spoilers. Um, so this is it running locally, right? And man, typing with one hand is kind of hard. So what I'm going to do is that would be perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to pick a color here. That's why I have a bright, colorful, thank you, <laughs> my background. And I'm going to change it. This is like the, the primary color variable. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to save. Boom. And I'm going to go back to the browser. And it's already here. Like, now we have it blue. And just to see that I'm not lying because the live one was blue, let's pick this pinky thing. It's going to look terrible, but there you go. So now what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to create a new branch and I'm going to call it, um, you know, new color, a dash. I'm going to push this. And uh, this is pretty standard, right? I think everyone does this. You know, that makes a change, create a new branch. So, anyone wants to guess what you would do next? Spoilers, I'm going to GitHub. Spoilers, I'm going to the repo. I'm going to open a PR. This is what we do, right? Um, you start working on a new feature, new design, new something, and you open a PR. And usually, what we do is like, I personally just make a work in progress uh, tag so people know please don't merge this this is still me doing the thing um and so i open a pr and if you go to netlify i have that open somewhere if you go to netlify what netlify is going to do is automatically start building that pr we can see it here building so we took those changes and because it's static we can build a different one and so all automatically we i i didn't touch the Netlify UI. So directly on GitHub, uh, we have something like deploy preview processing, and this will take a while because it's still a big Hugo site. And live demos are awesome. No, you're sweating. <laughs> we can check the deploy log because we're building that. Uh, cleaning up, site is live, yay. Okay, so directly on GitHub, you're gonna see, you're gonna have a, like a link and you can see that and hopefully it's pink, yay. So that changed, the, think of this like the new feature that you're working on, um, it's live. Like this is the actual, with the actual content. This is not just like a dummy version. This is your website with the content. And we do this all the time for like new features or uh, like, we had a big, massive uh, redesign, so we had this deploy preview uh, in our PR, um, and it's great. But what else? Uh, I mentioned Netlify CMS, so think. Um, oh, by the way, uh, one quick thing, just to spoil why the other one was blue, is because on Netlify we can go to split testing, right? I'm going to stop the test. Spoilers. That that was why it was blue. Uh, and I, by the way, I'm a front end developer. I know nothing about this stuff. I just know that I can come here and say, you know what, I'm working on this new design and I want to roll it out, like split testing. So I can say, you know, I can slide the thing and say, well, you're right, master, send 50% of the traffic and this new branch, new color, send another 50. You can save the changes. You can start the test. And now, and now. <laughs> uh, so this is, you know, the website on Netlify. And it's pink. Yay. And math, there's a 50% chance that this other one will also be pink. If I open it, again, math. Open a new one, eventually it won't be pink. Orange, yay. So there you go, like split testing, done. 
Um, one last thing, and I'm out of here. Uh, a pretty cool thing that we needed for smashing, and it's something that you're going to need if you want to go to the static side route, is you're going to need um, a CMS. So I have the CMS uh, plugged into this demo site. And so if you do your site slash admin, uh, you're going to see this pretty basic um, uh, UI for like a, you know, for, a, for CMS. So it's what you expect. I'm going to click plus and create a new post. Pretty standard. And I'm going to give a title. Um, Hello, Algolia peeps. And I'm going to need your intro blur. Uh, nice to meet y'all. I don't know French. And, uh, you know, we can even add a photo. So I have one here. It's a bunch of baguettes. And this is like a body you can have marked down. By the way, this is open source. This is, every, this is a React app. Everything is extensible. You can plug in whatever you need. So right now we have like an intro blur in an image. You can plug like a YouTube link, a thing, whatever you need. It supports Markdown, so I can say like, you know, we we. I'm so sorry. We we baguette and give some, you know, some body text. This is now working because text expander. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, it's not important. There you go. And uh, I save it. Pretty standard. Okay, I think I. Thank you. Yeah, I think I got it from here. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and I'm saving this. And this is pretty standard. You know, people need this. This is not nothing new. But uh, the cool part is that uh, this is a Git-based CMS. So right now you can see this. You have like these columns, drafts, waiting for review, waiting to go live. And you can do like a Trello thing. You can just drag it, right? So it's not a draft. It's waiting for review. And when it when it's waiting for review, you can also push it to waiting to go live. And when it's actually waiting to go live, you can publish it. Now, pretty, pretty straightforward, nothing new. But the cool thing is that this is based on Git. So in the, you know, behind the scenes, what's going on is we're creating a new a commit with all the changes. And we're automatically creating a new pull request for that blog post. And because of the, because it's a pull request and because it's on Netlify, by the way, this CMS, it doesn't need Netlify to run. It's, again, open source. Um, so you can see uh, there's a new PR open. Uh, and here you can see all the files that was changed. There's a new baguette picture with a watermark. I totally just got it from Google. And there's a, you know, this is a markdown file, a file that goes into the, the post thing. And um, because it's on Netlify, there you go. There's a, like we created the deploy preview for you. And if you go to that link, uh, you have your actual website running with real content. There's a new entry here. Hello, Algolia peeps. And uh, there it is. And now, as a developer, you don't need to, you know, look at the that CMS UI. You can do everything from Git. Um, and when I just hit publish now, sure, what's going to happen is, where is it? I lost the, oh, there it is. Uh, it's merged, the the PR. That is it. We've been using this ad Netlify, like the our blog, since a while now. Um, and it works. Like people who are not developers, you know, they're content editors, they're whatever. They don't need to deal with Git and stuff. Um, and for us that do de uh, deal with Git, this is amazing because it's like this is what we used to. This is what we like. And again, version control, everything that comes with Git is there. Um, and this is a static website, which means you can't have any functionality, right? Um, that that's not true. That's it was a joke. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and so that is it. Where's my keynote? Where, I, I think I have one slide. So how sweet is that workflow? I don't know. I think it's pretty sweet. Um, it's pretty cool, especially for me, like not a backend developer. It allows for so much, and it's so fun. So that was me. This is me on Twitter. If you have any question, if you want links for stuff, um, reach out, and uh, I'll be happy to answer. I'm not, I didn't answer what an API is. That's not for me. Thank you. Any questions? Is that a question box? Yeah. Cool. So you have to. Uh, okay, I understand what is it is. Hello. It's great. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Incredible. Okay, I understand what is JavaScript and API, but I don't understand what is markup. It's, is it like Pug? Oh, markup is, oh, wow. I never answered that question. Uh, like HTML is a markup language. Okay. Markup is how th th things are structured. 
in a is that a fair uh, answer? <laughs> sure. So HTML DH, the I mean DM sort of a markup. But okay. It's just a way to like mark down. So the markup of markdown is how you structure your your thing. Okay. Wait, thank you. Anything else? That is amazing. Thanks for your presentation. That's and thank you for holding my microphone. Um, I have a question. Do you plan to support other, other uh, static website generators beyond Hugo? Uh, by we, you mean Netlify? Well, yeah, maybe Netlify. Or uh, well, absolutely. So at Netlify, uh, you just specify the repo where your site is, or you can drag and drop. You, you don't need. My Thank question you. was more about the tools that you've developed for uh, Ugo. Uh, but I you mean the CMS? The CMS for yes. Example. Yes. Yes. It, uh, it does work. Okay. Um, you can go. The website is uh, netlifycms.org. We have all the documentation, but yes, absolutely. Uh, it's not Hugo exclusive. More time? Uh, we're done? Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.